Player feedback will make your games more fun. It is important for humans to understand the impact of their actions on the world around them. In a previous video, I touched upon this and showed off some ideas for how to make your game more engaging and crunchy without adding any new content. The polish effects I added were some animation, screen shake, sound effects, white flash, time freeze, and a little bit of particles. Now before I add anything new to the scene, I'm gonna quickly make a modification to our good old friend screen shake. I'm gonna quickly tone it down a lot to make it a bit less distracting, and so that we can save more intense screen shake for more powerful events. Also, I'm going to remove the time freeze and place it in this little bag. It's a surprise tool that will help us later. Another change I'm going to make is to the blood particles shooting out of our enemy square. I'm going to change the direction they can travel in from a 360 degree angle to roughly the same direction that the bullet was travelling in so that the motion created by the bullet can be preserved. Now, onto the new changes. To make this game a little bit more interesting and dynamic, I'm going to add a simple reloading mechanic to our gun. Four bullets, and once you're out you have to press reload if you want to start shooting again. I'm choosing to represent the ammo through, you guessed it, more squares, however instead of placing these in the corner of the screen or something, I'm going to place these underneath the player, since this is where the player's eyes are going to be focused most of the time. In my favourite example, Enter the Gungeon, since dodging is a critical part of the game, the player's eyes will be darting around the place, checking for bullets flying towards them or enemy attack animations, but the one place you can guarantee your players will have their attention on most of the time is the area around the player, as this is where all of the bullets they currently need to dodge are, making it a great place for important information such as a reload bar, which I will shamelessly drag and drop into my game as well. Now, Gungeon has chosen to place their ammo counter to the side of the screen, but this isn't necessarily a bad choice, as by making some information about the game's mechanics more difficult for your player to access, you can promote mastery, where intimate knowledge of the game can help in moments where the player is put under pressure and must react quickly and flawlessly. This doesn't mean make your game hard to understand, as making UI as readable as possible is generally the way you want to go, but it is important to understand how the location of information in your game can affect your player's mindset when approaching and learning playing the game. On a side note, another reason that Gungeon doesn't put ammo anywhere near the player is because of the amount of bullets it would have to represent would fill the area around the player and distract from the main focus of the game, which is dodging. Always make sure to consider how information may hinder and obscure, and use your screen space wisely. Don't just throw any old information in the most critical eye traffic areas of your screen. In this case, a gun that only has 4 shots is going to be a lot more important to keep track of than a gun with, let's say, 100. Try ranging information by importance and frequency of use. Since adding tiny little animations and details to everything is the most fun part of game development, I made the little bullet boxes pop when the gun has finished reloading, drawing their eyes back to the centre of the screen with a little bit of motion and bringing their attention back to shooting instead of dodging or anime woman or whatever else they were thinking about. While the reload action is now represented through the UI, it still feels a bit underwhelming as it has no impact on the actual game world, so I slapped a little spinning animation and sound effect made up of a modified combination of free online sound effects to make sure every input the player makes is something that the player character reflects in-game. Having ways to represent the player's state other than just UI is crucial to making your game more intuitively readable and to having the player's actions stand out. The last thing I want to do here is to bring back our surprise tool, Time Freeze, I'm going to finally put the red cube out of his misery and let him die after being shot a few times. The shot that kills him will be amped up with a little bit of extra screen shake and a pinch of time freeze to help signal to the player what they have done. Subtle increases in impact can help the player understand what is going on off screen outside of the normal way of doing that, which is just by using sound effects. The way you choose to use crunch in your game is a lot more important than just spreading it all over every mechanic and interaction in your game. To help your moment to moment gameplay stand out, you should focus on using these tools to create a sort of a language which lets the player instantly understand what is going on without a tutorial or a UI, even if they're interacting with something they've never seen before. On another little side note, a lot of people who commented on the last video mentioned that they hate it when a game doesn't allow you to turn off screen shake, so maybe just throw that in the settings menu of any of your final releases. To make sure the play space isn't cluttered, the red square explodes into a bunch of particles on death, but if your game has corpses or something similar, please make sure that you fade out the enemy or something like that in order to indicate that they are now a non-interactable object so that the player doesn't get distracted or confused. I hope that everyone watching this has a better understanding of how to use crunchy effects to improve their games, and I hope to see more of these effects used in clever ways in the future. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next one.